Hi everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, we're we're going to talk about the investment ecosystem here in Egypt. I apologize, I don't know Arabic. All I know is when I talk to the cab driver, I just go, Alatu, Alatu, you mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> um, we have some of the original OGs. Uh, you know, people have been investing in Egypt for a long time and doing finance in Egypt for a long time. So I think they can give us a, not, not just a current perspective, but a past perspective of where we've been, where we're going, and what the future looks like. Um, and uh, I'll start actually with Fadi. So um, Fadi, you know, when people started investing 10, 15 years ago, they were really taking a, a chance because there's no exits. They're almost, you know, maybe, you know, you just couldn't see the future of you invest in a company that you're actually going to make money. What does today look like? Um, very good question. Uh, de definitely, what, what we've heard a little bit, just to give you an idea about the size of investments that has been happening last year, it's $190 million in Egypt in 112 deals. And for, for uh, those nine months in 2021, there have been, uh, there's around $390 million of total investments, of VC investments and startup in Egypt. So that's great. And of course, besides the investment, what is even good is to have an ecosystem that produces as well return for the investors or the VCs that are coming and putting money in. And that's what has been happening recently. Uh, there has been, of course, to do a realized return, I mean to do a cash on an investment that you have done. So basically to exit or to partially exit one of the investments that you have done. And we have, seen, we have seen this as well from Egyptian startups that either went, like you've heard, I'm sure, of Swivel that went, that is going public. Of course. Uh, so that's for the investments. It's a great uh, return. We as A15 have done some quite uh, good exits back in 2014, 17, and this year exiting three of our companies at, at different stages. So definitely, in addition to the size of the investment, what is also good is to see an ecosystem that returns back, uh, that does a good return on invest investments that have been done. Well, congratulations on Thank your you. exit. Miss um, Dahlia, how is the corporate venture world working? I mean, obviously, you, you're, you're not a traditional VC. You, you come from a, you're a chairperson CEO of a large publishing house. And how does the corporate world work, look at the VC world right now and investing in startups? Um, maybe in Egypt it's not very familiar to have corporate ventures. Uh, when we started this idea, we believed very much that there are a lot of opportunities in the market. That, however, if our company is big and uh, as big as it could be, it will never ever uh, cover all these fields of uh, education, technology, and cover all the need and the gaps in the market. So, corporate venture mainly is. Uh, First, starting from the investment side, the money that comes through the investment is mainly from the corporate. So definitely the corporate should have its strategy in selecting the startups. And uh, this is the first point. The second point, when the company starts its own venture capital, corporate venture capital, it should set a clear strategy among four of three, four, four directions. Either it's going to take financial return mainly because it sees an opportunity and it can invest in a certain company and then exit, it's fine. And there is a, another direction which is not only for money but for a strategic move for the company. So these are the two main axes that we work around. So it gives us four parts either pure investment for returning money back by understanding the market quite well, the needs and so on, and giving the startups a full support to penetrate these markets in order to exit with a good cash, or to support startups when there is an opportunity that they think it might be um, have a good future, and they start watching it and where, whether it's going to really boom or not, or either it's a really a strategic move for the company and as you know, the big companies, they cannot move as quickly as startups. So they, we invest in startups who fill this main gap and we support them quite well. And we consider that this is part of our future. Uh, this is from the investment side. 
Uh, from the exit side, as I said, part of it, we think of li just liquidation and selling out and exit. And most of the company is not mainly for uh, the exit. Part of it is strategically, either that we complete the portfolio together and support each other, even if this is a big and this is a small company. The small company startup will be big, inshallah, in a very short time with some support. Or we plan that this company we will acquire at a certain point. And we start working on building our strategy like this and put it percentages for every one. So the model is totally different starting from the investment side till the exit side. It, it, it sounds much more aligned from that perspective. Um, you're, in, you're, you're sort of the big fish, and as was stated, um, there's an incredible amount of new money coming into Egypt at the early stage capital. But when those companies start to grow and need even more money, you know, at the later stages, at the C, D, you know, and above stages, you know, I've heard other countries complain in Sweden um, that the U.S. investors just come in and swoop up our companies. You know, so yes, they get the C money, they get the A money, they get the B money, and then all of a sudden, whoop, they're a Silicon Valley company. Is there, is, does Egypt see the same path, or do you think there's going to be, you know, bigger, bigger investors from the private equity world? What do, what do you see in that, in that phase? Uh, in my very humble opinion, I believe the government have been quite uh, focused now on the VC world on uh, the future of VCs. Uh, I, I just don't want to say just FinTech. FinTech is taking the spotlight uh, because uh, a lot of developments have been taking place. Uh, but I believe Egypt uh, government, uh, central bank, uh, financial regulatory authority, all of them are focused towards developing VCs uh, many ministries, Ministry of Investment, Ministry of Information uh, and, and Communication uh, have been focusing on this and I believe the future is definitely towards uh, the growth stage. Many companies uh, who are uh, coming out of Egypt and went out of Egypt, I believe there's lots of opportunities for them in Egypt and I believe international players uh, will be coming to Egypt. Uh, uh, the most recent uh, news uh, is that the cent, uh, not the central bank, the uh, president uh, gave a decree that uh, the three largest uh, public banks, Bank Mr. National Bank of Egypt and Bank du Caire, are going to lead uh, the establishment of a VC fund for fintech. Uh, the seed capital for this fund is one billion as a start. Uh, for uh, Egyptian companies working in Egypt and uh, for foreign uh, in companies who wants to uh, do business in Egypt. That direction was FRA regulations and, and, and there is a new law which is looking into robo-advisory, AI, uh, insure tech, uh, health tech, uh, rec tech, um, crowdfunding. All of those uh, initiatives are taking place uh, we heard that the Central Bank of Egypt is doing something for the uh, fintech as well, but they're fully supportive. The Central Bank have been uh, working on the sandbox, which ha which gave access to many companies to to pilot their projects uh, before it goes uh, to the market. Uh, so I believe the framework uh, is, is is quite supportive of the VC world. It's uh, did you want to say something? No, no, I just want to comment that the initiative by the banks to do a fund that is focused on fintech is a great initiative, definitely done in Egypt. Exactly to answer your question about going into the B, C, and D round, what we're missing maybe is to be able to go publicly. So once a company wants to exit, to go uh, to go public in Egypt, and this is, I think, uh, my my take. I don't know some. Uh, so if you had your magic wand. You would create a very dynamic public market so that these companies could exit. That that was your, that would be your hope. Yeah, because at the moment, mm -hmm. it's the exit is either uh, a similar company like Amazon coming to acquire Su or uh, Uber to Karim or, uh, for example, in our case, T-Pay, uh, a private equity uh, focus on Africa came and did the partial exit. 
but you don't have the, the possibility to go and, and exit uh, publicly, uh, even in the region. So they go uh, NASDAQ or they go uh, outside the region. Yeah. Yeah, adding to that, this is indeed a great achievement. Yet, if we see companies from Egypt listing on the stock exchange here, or uh, if we develop our regulations to be more attractive and investor friendly for foreign countries, foreign companies, sorry, to come and list in Egypt, but that's it's, it's going to take a while. But I, I, I'm, I'm quite sure we're heading towards the right direction. So, um, Kyle says we're, we're heading toward the right direction, Miss Miss May. But if you act, um, if you actually had a magic wand and could say tomorrow, instead of us waiting the years of going through the process of changing the regulations to make it easier, what what two regulations or two things that you would change tomorrow for the investors to be able to have a better sort of investor ecosystem for Egypt right now? Actually, the problem does not start with the exit part. It starts yeah. from the very beginning. Uh -huh. We have a, a lot of regulation that should be adapted in order to make it more flexible because a lot of companies, when they feel that just they are passing the seed fund and moving towards a series A, a lot of uh, them just leave Egypt and open up the company, or even they start, they're opening up a company in a different country because of this part of the regulations. So starting from uh, making things more flexible, like accepting things like uh, vesting, for example, is not, legally it's not bonding in our country. Although vesting is an ABC thing in, in, in the ecosystem. Uh, when you talk about convertible notes, uh, or... or Even stock option, vesting of the stock option, yes. of okay. stock option plans. Exactly. So, actually, the yes, uh, there are a lot of efforts that have been done, but still a lot of regulation should be adapted in order for Egypt to cope with the investment uh, environment and to be attractive even for the Egyptians, because as I just said, Egyptians invest outside and they list their companies outside of Egypt. Well, so, we've talked about the, the public markets a bit, um, and, and Badi, you sort of started off with some of the success recently in the growth of early stage capital happening. But I, I did look at some of the numbers of, of similar countries, um, like Vietnam, Nigeria, Pakistan, and we're seeing similar rises to, to those countries. So do you think if, if an invest, outside investor is coming from outside, and you know they're looking at these emerging markets, these big market countries, what do you think makes Egypt different? Than a, than a Pakistan, a Vietnam, a Nigeria, so, you know, what, what makes it different? Population size is quite amazing. That's, that means a, a, a market size that is huge. And adapt, 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 the rise in adopting technology by the population, in everything they do, that's another great uh, opportunity for the VCs that are focused on tech, that this market size would eventually or is adopting the technology. The other thing is the initiatives by the government, like for example the financial inclusion, that means that, that, that that's why fintech is very popular at the moment because it is partially uh, you know, uh, pushed and uh, publicized by the government to come and you know, turn the financial system into a digital financial system. So that, that would be a very good attraction to VCs in this way. In addition, um, there is a a big number of startups who are starting their own companies, although there is a repetitive ideas in the market, definitely, but there is a huge move in the concept of startup in Egypt, um, going through by incubators and accelerators. So there is a huge support from the private and the public sector towards this stage. And in our uh, sector, for example, education sector, our company now is four, four years and we are starting our fifth year. We had 800 startups applying in education technology, wow. and we are specialized. So having 800 startups applying for our company, uh, yes, we are the only uh, corporate venture capital specialized in education, but still to have 800 who know our company and they are يعني, presenting their portfolio, this means that we have in all different sectors a huge number of startups. So opportunity to find real good startups is there because the, the whole ecosystem is developing and there is a huge support, as I said, from both the uh, government and the private sector and the angel investment is also increasing. 
this phase, there were some available uh, people and networks and so on, but actually the whole ecosystem is really improving very quickly. Carl, do you have an opinion on this? If I would add to what's been said, I believe the pandemic have been very supportive of all this direction. Uh, it fast forwarded too many things. It fast forwarded uh, fintech financial inclusion. We have been talking about financial inclusion for probably four or five years. Uh, we had Bank Mystery Group. We have been forward looking, and then before the pandemic, we have been working on a digital bank. We have a digital transformation office, and uh, those are two different initiatives. And we, as Mystery Capital, the investment banking arm, we're working on uh, solutions as well. We saw uh, this opportunity, uh, and it's 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 adding to uh, basically. There are financial returns, of course. It, it's developmental, and uh, uh, it fits the criteria or, or one of the goals of the 2030 goal of Egypt. Uh, so, so it makes sense in, in, in many aspects. Uh, getting the support of, of the government, uh, whether under ministries, whether under the Central Bank of Egypt, as I said, or the FRA, uh, everybody's fast moving. Uh, Talking about the electronic uh, uh, signature or the EKYC a uh, couple of years ago was a taboo. Uh, we never saw it coming. We didn't know when it's going to come. Uh, I believe it's coming very soon. Uh, so it fast forwarded everything. Uh, investors are, are more interested. Uh, definitely, a country of 110 million is, is definitely. Uh, uh, worth looking at, and, and, and there are lots of uh, drive towards technology. Uh, our kids are using technology more than us, they're more tech savvy. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something which could be, sound quite weird. And, and, uh, one and a half years ago, I didn't activate any of my online banking accounts for one simple reason because. The pain of going to the bank for me wasn't a pain because I go to the branch manager and I do whatever I want, drink a cup of coffee and just leave in five minutes. So definitely it's not a pain. When I started using it after the pandemic, I don't see any moment that I will go to a bank anymore. <laughs> so I'm not the perfect example, of course, yeah. but, but anyways, uh, to reach any client now, or to reach any person for any transaction, social activity, or this is the only means of, uh, this is the only window. We spend on our phones at least eight, ten hours a day. Now it's becoming much more due to the Zoom and meetings and, 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 and Teams and, and, and all those stuff. So we're hooked up to it. So unless you can engage in, act, in an activity through your mobile, Nobody's going to interact with you. I'm not going to leave my office, leave my place, and go physically to do anything unless it's a, an emergency or a necessity or a matter of life and death. So technology is, is, is the only way going forward. And it's not due to the pandemic. The pandemic just fast forwarded everything. That, that's great. So we've talked about the acceleration of technology caused by the pandemic how the government is now gonna support investors more. Um, and we've seen the growth in the numbers that Fadi was telling us. It, ha, have the entrepreneurs in Egypt changed? Let me ask you this question. I mean, because ultimately you're, you're betting on them and you're hoping that they're gonna do something. And have, and have any of you seen a change in the types of founders, the entrepreneurs? I, 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 Ms. Dahlia, maybe I'll start with you. Have you seen anything you know, with the entrepreneurs? Have they become more sophisticated? Yes, they are, but not many of them. As I just said, um, the, the wave is increasing and the number of startups is increasing, but the number of startups who are getting more sophisticated and uh, more professional, of course, yet are not yet enough. Um, 
but I believe that they are increasing and uh, increasing yeah, quite well, especially that they, when they have a right uh, word, right governance, and they have good support from their investors, they accelerate very quickly and very professionally. Not the number that we are expecting yet, but it is improving. Right. How about you, Fadi? What are you yeah. seeing? Definitely, there is a huge improvement in the quality of the entrepreneurs and the quality of the product that, that they are offering. Compar comparing five years ago in 2015 when we started this to now, definitely there is a huge rise in the, the talent because of many things. I mean, one of the aspects definitely is the more the more exposure, is more educational uh, material available. Uh, easy to get uh, online courses, uh, more uh, uh, incubators and accelerators that really teach, more involved VCs with entrepreneurs as well. So definitely there is improvement in the last five years uh, in both the quality of entrepreneurs and the quality of the products or the startups themselves. Kyle, when, when the founders become, come to you and they're CEOs and they're, they're managing a plethora of problems, what, what, what do you see is unique about the Egyptian CEO and what do you still think they need to work on from your perspective on the companies that you're sort of investing in and, and looking at? When it comes to investing in VCs, it's, 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 it's a totally different ball game. Uh, we cannot just look at it at the, as a brick and mortar uh, kind of business. It, it's a totally different way of valuation, totally different way of outlook. Uh, so it's, it's not quite the norm. Uh, so CEOs or decision makers need to adjust the way they assess the new investment opportunities. It's, it's totally different. Uh, can, you, can you extrapolate? Can you go deeper on that? Uh, if, if, if we evaluate any of, of the new uh, uh, startups, the old way we look at Swivel, for instance. Swivel, which is valued one and a half billion dollars, is loss making for, for quite a few years. In normal course of business, you, you wouldn't be considering investing in it. That's a perfect example of it. Uh, Uber is loss making, Facebook is loss making, and, and, and look at their uh, stock performance and, and, and the forward looking. So it's totally transforming into totally different way of looking forward at it. Uh, so, uh, as, as Fadi mentioned, exposure wasn't there. Yani 15 years ago, if, if we expected, or 10 years ago, if we expected to see an event like this, the amount of positive energy and vibe we have, I have seen today is unbelievable. Uh, I heard the figure is around 15,000 uh, uh, participants. Uh, I doubt uh, yani, that those uh, students, most, most of them are students, still are, are, are attending the university. And, and yet, they're coming with positive energy and coming to attend this uh, event, a very respectable event. Uh, uh, we haven't had accelerators ages ago. We haven't had incubators ages ago. We haven't had summits, conferences. Uh, yani, for me, when, when I meet uh, those uh, in, uh, in very inspiring uh, uh, students, I look at it from, from those angles. Basically, I want to support them because if, if I go back in time, I would definitely would love to be in their place. I would definitely would like to take that opportunity. I, I never took it before. I never took that risk. I, 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 I shied away definitely from it. And I wouldn't have seen it, to be completely honest. But uh, anyway, <laughs> let, 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 let me say just a funny story. I, I was talking to my six-year-old kid, and I was asking him, what would you like to be uh, in the future? He told me, I want to be a YouTuber. You have to pay taxes now. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell him that. So I asked him, how much would you make? He told me, I'll make millions of dollars and I'll be a billionaire, a six-year-old kid. Uh, uh, probably when I was a six-year-old kid, uh, I was playing with a car and I was so happy. So imagine the generation is coming and, and, and how are they looking? And he started giving me examples of, of uh, 
famous YouTubers uh, who are kids, Ryan and, and, and other names. So the whole uh, 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 thing is, is, is transforming right now. We haven't studied VC in, uh, uh, during our time at university. We, 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 we only saw that uh, if it's a, f a positive free cash flow, uh, discounted cash flow, and all this, uh, sorry, rubbish, no? It's, 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 it's outdated. Allow me to add something very important also that happened in the ecosystem. A mentorship. Mentorship has increased tremendously. And all the, uh, yeah, the very professional people who have started this in Egypt, this move, like Dr. Khaled Ismail sitting with us today, and others, they have been supporting the ecosystem heavily. And a lot of people who have been through this experience are starting also to support with their different backgrounds. So five years back, the number of mentors was very limited. Today, you have a lot of volunteers, a lot of people who are really gathering and doing a lot of organizations just to support the ecosystem, either through mentoring or through angel investment and etc. So there is a whole move that is really supporting the ecosystem heavily. Yeah, I wanted to answer your question about the quality also of the, the CEOs and the founders. I think what we lack here, they go, we have talents are good, but what we lack a bit in Egypt that the founders should be working, and even the, the new generation of employees is discipline. I think discipline and consistency is our, our main issue with all the talents that we have. We can have very talented people, but not consistent in their work, not well disciplined. And I've seen this in, I started a startup uh, also a year ago or something. The quality of the people coming and joining, they might be very good, but they lack this uh, discipline that we've seen maybe before in the, the employees and the founders. And I, I've been in other countries. Would you say it's more that you don't have that middle layer of management that helps sort of bring the standards and the systems and the culture into the company, or do you think it's something different? Yeah, that's part of it. Definitely the middle layer, some, sometimes it's hard to find. I think also learning. We have the, this uh, uh, word in Egypt, Fahlawa, uh, yani. It means <laughs> that you can do things and you yes. can, you know, just uh, hustle through, which is good to, to be a hustler. But sometimes you need to really learn and understand how things are done to be able to hustle well, let's say. So, uh, so middle layer, we found a lot of trouble sometimes in finding the right calibers. And with the very good calibers in the middle layer, usually they are headhunted sometimes by companies, like uh, by other countries, and they go and, and uh, work uh, out of it. So, yeah. yeah, if I add to that, I, I, I believe most of uh, the founders right now, what, what they need is, is some patience uh, and some market research. In, in what way? Patience and market uh, research. Uh, yani they need to be patient on, on, on growing the business. Sometimes they're overexcited, sometimes they're, uh, they put some they're not on the ground. They're not on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Most of the ideas are, are brilliant ideas, but some some of them are not scalable. Uh, are not studied quite well mm. because uh, they they're, they're super fast. The pace, life space is, is 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 of course faster, but they need to be more patient. And and uh, as Fadi mentioned, yeah, we have an issue in the corporate world. Uh, our corporate world is that most of the bright minds have uh, uh, shifted to the startups uh, and, uh, and 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 the fintech and, and and all that, which is really impacting the quality of fresh grads coming to the corporate world. And, and if I go back in time, what what and if I see this future, I'll go to the corporate world. I'll learn discipline first. I learn uh, some tactics, strategy, and, 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 and life being on the ground, as, as Fadi kindly mentioned it. And then I'll consider moving. Uh, so uh, I would rather, uh, that's a bit of a bold statement, uh, go and invest with a founder who's, who's a bit older than a, a very young uh, person. 
not because of anything, but if there is a statistic for that, I would love to see it. Uh, most of the successful ideas, I would assume, coming out of more well-rounded uh, founders. I'm, 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 I'm just uh, assuming that if, if there is a well, statistic for I, that. I, I, th I think there's, um, you're, you're coming into maybe uh, the, the conflict of traditional investing versus the, the Valier investing, for lack of a better word. And now that you've had one or two Valley deals, the expectation might be that all entrepreneurs are going to be like that, when in realism, only a small, small, small percentage, even in the United States, of companies are the high flyers, the, the companies that you know um, reach valuations that nobody can kind of mathematically um, figure out. Um, but the most of the, the rest of the world, including for a lot of angel investors that I talk to, work in sort of the very straightforward, you know, this is what a typical A, B, C rounds are, and these are the valuations, and this is, so I, I, I don't know, um, uh, so where I'm at at, at Baha Private Capital, we understand we're not in that A plus Valley game. You know, we are in a game where we're in, our typical exits are 25 to $30 million. We understand that, and that's our game for most of most of the investments. And so I don't know if uh, if there's investors that realize sort of the, the dynamics of, yeah, it's amazing that Egypt is getting some of these very successful companies that are having incredible valuations and are making their investors pretty rich, I hope. Um, but at the same time, there's still very practical investing of really good companies that will probably get to I mean, a $25, $30 million company is still a great company, you know, even if it's not on the cover of all these magazines and, and websites and things like this. So I don't know if, if that sort of recognition that there's all sorts of dynamic companies and there's different ways to invest in these types of different companies. In our case, for example, as a corporate venture, we actually, as I said, that we work on four different uh, directions. One of them is the one that you have just stated that we see a certain opportunity, certain gap in the market, so we can support a company, a startup, that fills this gap, and we are very happy either if it is not going to exit, but at least it will fill the gap and have a good market and a good future with such a great value, and it is fine. So having a mix of portfolio, and you quite well know that this is the mix I'm interested in, and I'm happy to have this percentage of exit with this value, etc. and and others like this, and even some companies, you just consider them of value of zero, but you do this your homework and you accept this from the very beginning, it's very important because definitely you will not have all the companies succeeding and uh, yani, you will make uh, yani, billions of, of dollars. So the acceptance and the understanding is very important and also uh, having a good eye on the market and continuous market research to support your startups with the direction is very important to give them the direction and the understanding of how big this company can be. Absolutely. Fadi, are you seeing valuation inflation here because of some of these deals that are happening? or Definitely. Uh, we don't have the best uh, reputation as A15 uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like uh, to go with higher valuations than normal. Uh, usually we go a bit less, but definitely there is an inflation especially from external VCs that are coming, I'm um, saying maybe American VCs that are coming and seeing and putting uh, even a uh, big fund at high valuation even before a product is there. So this is a bit new for, for Egypt and it's causing a bit of maybe uh, inflation. <coughs> but I think we are in general, I mean at, at the majority of the investments that has, has, have been um, uh, done, we are at a good average in terms of valuation, they're not too much inflated. I think we're catching up with what's happening in the world in general. So yeah. I wouldn't say inflated, but I would say, yeah, sometimes definitely find like, how did they reach this valuation? There isn't even anything on the ground, not even a product uh, there. So yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it's increasing, it's getting more expensive, but definitely also there is a bit of, at the moment, uh, 
there is quite a big uh, demand for investing in Egypt. So by default of economics, that that would go that would take the price up. But yeah. So, Ms. Dahlia, I mean, I would say when I used to be here 10 years ago, the leverage was all on the investors. The investors had all the leverage, you know, and, and they had to, they, the entrepreneurs had to bow to them. Do you feel the dynamic has changed where the entrepreneurs have a lot more leverage over the investors because there's outside investors coming in, there's more capital, I mean, there's, there's multiples of, of more capital now. Do you feel like... The, the market has shifted where the entrepreneurs have more leverage, or would you say it's more of a balanced playing field you know, right now? Actually, I see the leverage for the startups, if they are really qualified. Uh -huh. Because, and for example, in our case, as I told you, we have 800 startups that applied for our venture capital, and we just invested in nine companies. Although our plan by end of next week, next, next month, end of 2022, to reach 20 startups. So if they are really professionals, then they will find a lot of investors because a lot of cash has been injected, a lot of VCs have been opening either uh, Egyptian companies or uh, Gulf companies or even international, and especially that international venture capitals actually are studying our market. Even in the field of education, there are international mm -hmm. companies in the Silicon Valley who concentrate in education. They are very interested in, in, in the region, in Africa, and the Middle East, etc. So money is there, but the really qualified, the very high qualified uh, startups are very rare, so they have the rare. So um, I see we have about four and a half minutes left, so maybe, you know, um, we can just end this with some sort of just incredible wisdom, the things that you think about in the shower, that you're like, you know, if I just told the world, this is what I think about investment in Egypt, you know, this is, this is the chance to kind of share that, you know. I'll start with you, Fadi. What, what, what is sort of, I mean, you know, your sort of wisdom that you want to give out, your, your, maybe even a take on what the future looks like here, um, you know, your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, many many things. I don't have something specific in mind, but I, I love to see our country really, uh, you know, getting the right opportunities and the right, uh, uh, the right uh, uh, opportunities uh, and investment and the right uh, ideas and companies that would take this economy up because we have huge potential whether from the size of the population, whether from the adoption of technology, whether from now the interest from outside uh, Egypt, whether regional or the US or Europe, to come into Egypt. So I would love to see really uh, 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 more uh, success stories about Egyptian startups and entrepreneurs that would take the products and you know export it to everywhere else in the world. Uh, like, uh, I mean, other countries in, in the region that, that do this quite strongly, we don't have anything. We we're not we, we don't lack anything to be able to be the number one country uh, in the in the area to go and you know really do success stories, whether by really successful entrepreneurs or successful startups. So that's my dream. I, I would definitely second Fadi's thoughts. My advice to uh, the founders and, 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 and uh, basically to have more face in what they're doing. They're doing great. Uh, just they need to sharpen uh, what they're doing to make it not only suitable for the Egyptian market. We have brilliant, brilliant minds, brilliant ideas. Uh, coming out of Egypt uh, that really uh, cater to many needs. They just need to be uh, not sort of a local manner, to be regional and international. We can definitely make it. Uh, the vibe here, uh, I highly advise every, everyone basically to share their ideas. Uh, I'm quite sure we have 15,000 participants who would be 15,000 ambassadors to this event. Uh, unfortunately, this is just my first time, but fortunately, I made it to the Techni Summit, finally. 
uh, and I'll definitely make it a habit every year. I'll, I'll definitely come to this place to get the positive energy and share my knowledge w with whomever uh, needs it. Uh, I, I don't shy away from sharing my knowledge. It's not just somebody comes with an idea and, and I just uh, be opportunistic about it. I try to sharpen it. I try to uh, make sense out of it. Uh, right. And Ms. Ms. Dahlia? Definitely uh, that the startups should think of their companies internationally, think long term, and not only this, but they have to work for it. And don't think of uh, the quick wins. Very short, they shouldn't be short sighted. We have to be really disciplined. Um, what we say and what we commit for, we have to do it. And we should not be short sighted, be very long sighted, because what we are going to do today will affect us not after tomorrow, to just tomorrow. So being disciplined and having patience, we will reach what we want. This is an advice for the startups because most of them feel that it's an easy th thing that they can just do it. And money is there and we can collect some money and have some fun and have the prestige of being the founder and CEO. It's so, a long journey. Yes, <laughs> it, it is. is. Very long journey. It is. So uh, since I'm the moderator, I'll just take um, the advantage of saying, uh, at least my opinion, since I've been in, working in Egypt for since 2005, I think the thing that makes Egypt unique is there's actually a curiosity about technology here that you don't find in other places in the world. I mean, I've talked to many founders here, and the reason they're in technology is not because they thought they can make money, it's because they love it, they want to solve a problem, there's a curiosity. I mean, I'll compare to like the Philippines, where I talked to founders there and they got into it because they could make money. And I think that love of technology, and you could probably, you know, go to, you know, the ancient Egyptian days of doing these amazing engineering feats, is something that I think is incredibly unique to this country that I, I don't see in every part of the world, that it's more than making a startup and being rich and, you know, getting billions. Of course, that influences people, but there really is a love, and especially in Alexandria, where the hacker community is very strong, there's a love of technology here. So I appreciate you guys providing your insights and uh, I appreciate everyone staying and listening to us. Thank you. Thank you.